6100 to 6122 Highway Garandia. Mr. President, I would like to report out CP. 16-26 be sent to committee for a second reading on April the 26th at 5 p.m. There's a second. Second. And moving properly. Second. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Brown. No. Councilwoman Caldwell. Yes. Councilwoman Caldwell. Yes. Councilman Protho. No. Councilwoman Rogers. No. Councilman Smith. Yes. Councilwoman Sparks Wade. No. Councilwoman Wyatt. Yes. President Brewer. Yes. Mr. President, the vote is four yes, four no's. Vote of four yes, four no. It's failed for a lack of majority. CPO 2016-27, in order to many Title 15 and Title Land Usage, Chapter 123 and Title Zoning Code. Uh, the Code of Ordinances of the City of Garandiana, Petitioner High Point Properties, LLC, One Park Place Suite, 700, 621 Northwest, 53rd Street, Baca Raton, Florida, property at 5932 to 5924 Industrial Highway, Garandiana. Mr. President, I would like to report our CPO 16-27 be reported out on second and sent to committee for a planning meeting for April the 26th at 5 p.m. Still second. 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 And move it in proper second. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Brown. No. Councilwoman Caldwell. Yes. Councilman Protho. No. Councilwoman Rogers. No. Councilman Smith. Yes. Councilwoman Sparks Wade. No. Councilman Wyatt. Yes. And President Brewer. Yes. Mr. President, the vote is four yes and four no. With a vote of four yes and four no, CPO 1627 failed for lack of majority. CPR 2016-05, resolution approving the submittal of housing, community development FY 2016-2020 consolidated plan. FY 2016 Annual Action Plan and 2016 Analysts of, of Impediments to Fair Housing Choice for Gary, Indiana, and authorizing the filing of the plans with the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, sponsored by Mayor Karen Wilson and the Department of Commerce Division of Community Development. Oh, Mr. President, I move the CPR 16-05. He said to committee on his second reading, scheduled for a planning meeting April the 26th at 5 p.m. There's a second. Second. We're moving to the second one. Councilwoman Brown. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Brown. Yes. Councilwoman Caldwell. Yes. Councilman Proto. Yes. Councilwoman Rogers. Yes. Councilman Smith. Yes. Councilwoman Sparks Way. Yes. Councilwoman Wyatt. Yes. And President Brewer. Yes. Mr. President, the vote is 8 to 0. For the vote to 8 to 0, CPR 1605 has been moved to committee on April the 26th at 5 p.m. Mr. President, it's pity orders and resolutions on the second reading. Mr. President. Councilman Smith. Yes. I've been quiet for quite a while. Okay, I moved that uh, CPO 16 26. And Okay. Mr. President, I move that CPO 16-26 be read on all three readings at the next hearing. Okay. Okay. Okay, Mr. President, I move that CPO 16-25 and 26 be read on all three readings at the next hearing. It says second. Councilman, that ordinance was going to committee and it fell for a lack of majority. It was a tie vote, so it did not pass, so it was a lack of majority, so the motion fails. 
unless someone is reconsidering their vote, that's the only way we can move forward on that. But it has failed at this time. <laughs> to explain the council rules so you all can understand the procedure that we have to go by as the council. It was a tie vote, it did fail, and it did not go to committee. But Councilman Smith is correct. He can recommend that it be read at the next scheduled meeting for all three leading, and we still take a vote on it at the same time, which will go through the whole process of hearing, um, public portion, comments, and everything at the next meeting. But I'll turn to explain the rules at this time. Under section 2-217 of our rules, as I spoke to at a previous hearing with Councilwoman Hatcher, if for a reason, any reason, that a committee chair or a committee decides not to favorably report something out of committee, in fact, by not sending it to committee, you indeed are not reporting it out favorably or unfavorably. For, for our rules, any one council member, whether they're on that committee or not, can force that out of committee. He or she would have to make his intention or her intentions known at this meeting and at the next regular scheduled meeting, he can or she can force that out on all three readings, and it will require a simple majority vote. That's our rule. Thank you. Mr. President. Councilman Smith. Okay. Uh, so after hearing that, okay, I would like to uh, request a uh, passage of... Okay, I'd like to request a passage on all three meetings at the next hearing for simple 16-26 and 27. So that's a correction? Yes. It's 26 and 27. Okay. Okay. So the, the correction is the, the ordinance number. The correction is the ordinance number. Okay. That's all. All right. Okay. All right. It doesn't require a vote. Okay, so we will take this matters up with these two ordinances, CPO 1626 and CPO 1627 at the next council meeting, not committee meeting, council meeting on May 4th. We will deal with this um, issue here, which you will come up. We will have the presenters here. They will make their presentation before the council. We will hear a public comment. The council will give their feedback. Then we will take it for a full vote with the city council. So that will be what will happen with those two ordinances there. At this time, Mr. Uh, Mayor Karen Freeman Wilson is here. Oh, I'm sorry. Councilman Proto. It is my hope that uh, that this council will reject that uh, 26 and 27. Yes, sir. It's, uh, it's in the second the residents of the second district, majority of the calls that I received have asked me to not support that one. So, uh, regardless of the coming back, I still vote no. And I don't want to slight no one. Is there any other comments from any council meeting? Uh, Mr. President. Give me one minute. I want to go around to everyone. Someone else would like to speak, then I can come back to you. Mr. President, um, I have been, first let me clear, clarify something. I did not bring the GO group back to Gary, Indiana, and that's been, I heard the rumor from four or five, six different people that I was the one that brought them back. I did not bring them back. However, I did contact them because it is my responsibility as a council member to get all of the information possible, especially when it involves economic development for the city of Gary. When we're talking about 200 to 250 jobs, when we're talking about uh, the potential tax base 
that uh, the GEO group has promised that they would infiltrate into our city budget. However, in speaking with the residents in the 6th District, in receiving information, in speaking with my...